The very best way to handle injuries is to prevent them before they happen. Let's look at some important accident and injury prevention strategies. Follow all safety rules. Don't take shortcuts. Inspect your work areas and be aware of changing conditions. Mine sites often have unusual traffic patterns and right-of-way rules. Be sure you know the traffic pattern and rules at each site and obey all posted signs. Take extra precautions around congested loading areas and scales. Always follow the established mining methods to maintain high wall, stockpile, and bank stability. Never work near or under dangerous stockpiles, high walls, or banks. Don't risk getting trapped by working or traveling between machinery or equipment and high walls, stockpiles, or banks. Unguarded conveyor belts running next to walkways should be equipped with either emergency stop devices to quickly deactivate the drive motor if anyone falls on or against the conveyor, or railings that prevent persons from falling on or against a conveyor. Wear a safety harness and properly anchored lanyard if you are working from an elevated location. When shoveling material onto conveyor belts, always shovel in the direction the belt is traveling. That way, if the shovel hits the belt, it will fly away from you rather than back at you. Check emergency stop buttons and conveyor pull cords periodically to make sure they work. Keep walkways and work platforms clear of clutter and tripping hazards. Only walk under or over conveyors where it is safe to do so. Rollers are guarded in specified crossovers or cross-unders. When climbing ladders, always maintain three points of contact, two feet in a hand or two hands and a foot. Never work under suspended loads, including loader buckets, blades, and rippers. Be sure to properly block all equipment from movement and bleed off any stored hydraulic pressure before working on, under, or around equipment. Always keep three points of contact, two feet in a hand or two hands in a foot when you mount or dismount from equipment. Make sure your feet and the steps are free of mud, ice, or debris. Use a cord or rope to lift or lower lunch pails, thermos bottles, or tools. Keep your hands free when getting on or off equipment. Know and follow the proper dumping or loading procedures. Inspect the dump area frequently for hazards like overhead power lines, berms, and cracks, or slumping on the edges of stockpiles. Think about possible problems. If you have a brake failure, is there a secondary system? Do you know how to use it? Always be aware of changing conditions. Never stop thinking about safety. Materials have to be stored in a way that doesn't cause tripping or fall of material hazards. Material storage presents its own set of rules. Hazardous materials must be stored in containers that are approved for that use by recognized agencies. Each container must be properly labeled, including the name of the contents and the hazard it presents. If a material will create a hazard if it accidentally becomes separated from its container, it must be stored in a way that minimizes the danger of that happening. Chemical substances, including concentrated acids and alkalis, have to be stored where they can't inadvertently come in contact with each other or with other substances that could cause violent reactions or harmful fumes or gases. For safety, use walkways or passageways designed for moving around or over bins, hoppers, silos, tanks, and surge piles. These areas, as well as surface structures, switch panels, loading and dumping sites, and work areas should be lit well enough to provide safe working conditions. If lights are not working properly, be sure to report the problem so they can be repaired. If you use hitches or slings to hoist materials, make sure they are suitable for that kind of material. Suspended loads that require steadying or guidance need to have tag lines attached. If you must drop material from an overhead elevation, clear the area of personnel and make sure it is guarded from entry. Good lifting techniques will reduce injuries. Get help if the item is heavy or awkward. Be ready for the lift. Plan your route. Bend your knees. Tuck your pelvis. Keep the load close. Avoid twisting. And use mechanical lifts when you can. Damaged or defective equipment must be removed from service. Check slings, fastenings, come-alongs, and attachments before using them. Use the correct come-along, 
sling, or chain for the weight of the object you're going to move. If you aren't sure how to properly attach a sling or chain, get help. An improperly rigged lift is a hazard to everyone in the area. Never work or travel under a suspended load. Use the 4 to 1 ladder rule for extension ladders. Set the base of the ladder one foot away from the wall for every four feet of ladder height. A good rule of thumb is to stand at the base of the ladder and reach out with your arms. If your hands just reach the ladder, the angle is about right, not too sloped and not too steep. The top of the extension ladder should reach about three feet above the surface you are climbing to. Before you climb a ladder, check the footing to make sure there is no grease, oil, or mud on the rungs. Always keep three points of contact on any ladder, two hands and a foot, or two feet and a hand. The same rules apply to using a step ladder. Make sure the ladder is the right height for the job, keeping in mind that the top two steps should not be used. It's important to make sure the feet are leveled and secure. The spreader bars are locked, and you always keep three points of contact on the ladder as you climb. Always be aware of overhead power lines. You must keep equipment at least 10 feet away from power lines to keep the electricity from arcing to your machine. In addition, each mine has its own requirements, which will include safety belts and lines for persons working in areas where there is a danger of falling, lifelines for persons entering confined spaces, and life jackets or belts when there is a danger of falling into water. Traffic is another consideration at the mine site. Rules that dictate speed, right of way, direction of movement, and the use of headlights to assure visibility will be established for each mine. Restricted areas will be clearly marked. Chemical storage rules are designed to protect everyone at the mine site. Combustible materials should not be stored within 25 feet of electrical substations or unburied, flammable, or combustible liquid storage tanks. There should be a 25-foot perimeter that should be kept free of dry vegetation to minimize the potential fire hazard. Explosives and blasting are an important part of many mining operations. Because of the obvious danger, the rules are strict and must be carefully observed. Only people trained and experienced in handling and using explosive material can direct blasting operations and related activities. Trainees and inexperienced people can only work in this area in the presence of trained and experienced workers. If you find an explosive device on the mine site, don't pick it up. Mark the location and notify your supervisor immediately. Follow all procedures required at your mine site. Look at the ground before you get out of the cab or climb down a ladder. It doesn't take much to sprain or break an ankle as you step onto uneven surfaces. Use equipment or extra manpower if you can't safely lift a heavy object by yourself. When you have to carry something from one place to another, make sure the path is clear and there aren't any ruts, rocks, or other obstacles in the way. When you lift an object, keep your back as straight as possible. Try not to bend from the waist. Bend your knees, not your back. Place your feet close to the object, center yourself over the load, bend your knees, and lift straight up, allowing your legs to do the work, not your back. Be sure ladders and steps on equipment you work with are clean and have adequate toe clearance for climbing. Don't stand or climb on parts of the equipment that are not designed for that purpose. They can be slippery and unstable. Driver injuries are often a result of falling, slipping, jumping, or insecure footing while getting into or out of the cab or climbing the ladders on the trucks. Always face the truck and keep three points of contact using the steps and handholds provided. Also keep three points of contact whenever you climb up or down a ladder. Make sure your footing is secure with each step you take and support your weight with your hands until your feet are firmly on the ground. The key to avoiding slips and falls is to pay attention. Wear proper protective equipment. Check for hazards. Watch where you are going and think about what you are doing at all times. Follow your mind's rules for communicating with others on the site. If a coworker signals that he or she is coming into your work area, confirm that you heard and understand his or her intentions. Make eye contact with a person entering your area and signal them appropriately. Do not work alone in a hazardous area. 
make sure you have radio contact and others know where you are and what you are doing. 